It happened this way. My buddy and I were supposed to go elk hunting for the weekend, but he bailed on me Friday night after I had the truck packed up and ready to go. Something about the girlfriend's parents coming for the weekend. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Screw him. I decided to go alone. I'd never camped that way before, just by myself. But I was an experienced outdoorsman, so the prospect didn't alarm me. I was able to take off early Saturday morning, and after a several-hour drive, arrived at a provincial park up north. There were no other vehicles in the parking area, which suited me fine. I would have the woods all to myself. As it was already past noon, I headed into the trees, my destination a favorite spot off trail several miles in. And as I neared my destination, I was ecstatic to see the tracks of a huge elk. And, and not just huge, a monster elk. There were still patches of snow further in, sheltered by the trees, so I was easily able to track it. I had never seen such large prints. It was late afternoon when I reached my campsite, so I quickly set up the tent, gathered up some firewood, and made ready for the night. And then, as there were still a few hours of daylight left, before the darkness took control, I grabbed my bow and went in search of elk, in search of the big one. The track was easy to follow, almost too easy. And the size, enormous, almost too big. I, I felt a sudden stab of apprehension. Would my bow actually be able to bring down a beast of such dimensions? And I also started to wonder, uh, irrationally I know, but I also started to wonder if this huge elk, this huge wapiti, was trying to lead me further into the woods. Further into the woods in order to turn on me. It was just too big. The path petered out and led me into a meadow, an open space about 100 yards wide, still covered with dirty banks of melting snow. I could see the trail of my quarry, which had crossed the field and entered the darkened trees on the other side. The tracks looked fresh, very fresh. The elk had crossed only 20 minutes, half an hour, before, before. But I stood rooted to the spot. I felt a sudden sense of dread, an icy cold warning I could feel in the pit of my stomach. Some unconscious urge was telling me to stop, to turn around and get the hell out of Dodge. Across the way, something moved, and as I stared, some of the trees, some of the high branches, dark and skeletal in the gathering dusk, seemed to be moving. Moving. But there wasn't any wind, no breeze at all. Everything was dead still, still and silent, dead silent, as silent as the grave. Surely, surely those were branches I could see moving. Branches, not antlers. I began to back up very slowly, my bow clutched tight, ready for use. And, and I was shocked to suddenly realize it was almost dark. What the hell happened? I had three or four hours of daylight left when I left camp. Just, 
Just how long had I been trailing this thing? I hurried back to camp, where I was in for another shock. Someone had built a campfire. I had my bow ready to put an arrow through somebody, if I had to. I stepped forward as noiselessly as I could, trying to keep to the shadows until I could see who, who, or what had made themselves right at home. It was really dark now. It took a moment as my eyes adjusted to the firelight. And then I saw him, a dark figure seated on a log and gazing at the crackling flames. He was very tall, but at the same time, he gave me an impression of strength and of someone not to be messed with. I stepped into the light so that the stranger could see me. For a minute or so, we stared at each other, or at least I stared at him. I found it hard to see his eyes, which glared redly. Redly, I assumed, due to the roaring fire. Eventually, I said, Who are you? He, he answered in a deep, if hollow-sounding voice. If that makes any sense, what I'm trying to say is that while I could hear him clearly, his words seemed to come from far away, from somewhere far off in the encompassing darkness. What he said was, A friend, a friend. I repeated his simple words, to which he now added, A friend who has come to warn you. What about? I still had my hands on my weapon. Wapetito. What? You saw it. You saw its tracks. I remembered the moving trees, the moving branches, which had almost looked like antlers. And of course, I'd seen the tracks. What is this Wapati? You should never say the name more than you have to. It is a nature spirit, the great elk spirit, the great wapiti that rules the forest. It can take many forms, and it wants you to leave. Now! <laughs> I can hardly leave now. It's dark. The whole idea is crazy. The man stood up, and then I realized exactly how tall he really was. Seven feet in height and broad in the shoulders. Uh, somehow he made me think of a huge tree or a huge male wapiti or elk. I have tried, he said softly. If you are to remain, stay inside your tent. And with that, he strode off. One second he was there, and the next he was gone. I sat down by the fire, my bow still clutched tight, overwhelmed by a sense of threat. Who, who was that guy? And where the hell did he go? There shouldn't have been another human being around for miles. Another human being? I hadn't seen anyone all day just that movement in the woods. I felt vulnerable. The night seemed to have a thousand eyes. So I went inside the tent, <laughs> as if the canvas offered me any real protection. I lay down atop my sleeping bag and waited. Waited for the dawn. Of course. Of course, I dozed off. I suddenly woke up, thinking at first that I was in the middle of an earthquake. Something colossal, stupendous, was moving around the tent, 
something so large it made the ground tremble beneath it. Around and around and around it went, making everything vibrate and shake. I went to stick my head out of the flap of the tent, and then I remembered the warning of my friend. So I lay back down on my sleeping bag and waited, waited with my heart in my mouth. RIP! Something had torn through the side of the tent, something dark and twisted and gnarled. At first I thought it was a dead tree branch, but then I realized it was part of an antler the antler of a ginormous male elk. It was there for an instant before being withdrawn, and I no longer wanted to see, no longer wanted to see what was out there. So I lay frozen, listening to the rhythmic pounding, until in the end I passed out from sheer exhaustion. It was light when I awoke, and I don't have to tell you, I packed up and got out of there fast. But not before I saw all the tracks. Tracks which ringed my tent. Elk tracks. Wapiti tracks. Tracks which measured two feet across. Two feet! Normally, the rounded tracks of an elk are about four inches long. I told my buddy of my strange experience a few days later, over a few beers, and you know what? He laughed. Wapatito. My gramps told me about that. About him. Some kind of forest spirit, eh? A shapeshifter who can appear as a giant of a man or as a monster elk that can trample you into the dust. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a fairy tale. But, but it wasn't a fairy tale. I know what I saw, what I experienced. You believe me, don't you? Don't you? The moral of the story. Sometimes in life, it's hard to elk out the truth. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs in 2022. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix Here, that's P X Here, while the music was the dreadful The Dread by that wonderful patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. Thank you for listening.